Well, today the issue of who becomes the running mate of popular Labour Party candidate Mr. Peter Obi was put to rest. As a party named Senator Yusuf Dati Baba met as the vice presidential candidate of the party, Mr. Obi has said that he was looking for a younger vice presidential candidate and believes has now found one in Senator Dati. Now, for those who may not know, Senator Dati is no stranger to Nigerian politics. He's been in politics since 2003. He's a, as a man of many formers. He's a former member of the House of Representatives on the platform of the ANPP, a former senator on the platform of the CPC, former presidential aspirant of the PDP, a former PDP governorship aspirant for Kaduna State, and now the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Here's my guest tonight, Senator Dati. Welcome to Politics Today. My pleasure to be here, sir. I think we should just begin from um, with a quick clarification. Yes. Uh, it would be great to put the issue of your age to rest. On, so on Wikipedia and online platforms, there is 1975-1976. Which is it? I was born in 1969, and I was exactly 53 yesterday. 1969? Yeah. So you're 53? Yeah. Yesterday was my birthday. Oh, happy birthday, then. Thank you. Now, before we talk about your vice presidential candidates, let's do a quick political housekeeping. You tried to run for president on the, the PDP. Yes. In 2019, and this year you tried to secure the PDP ticket for the governorship uh, seat in Kaduna State, but withdrew from that race. But I think one of the things that everyone is concerned about is why were you not interested in running for president this year? Very good question. I was highly honored to belong to a uniting Nigeria. When in 2018, most of the very serious Southern and Christian politicians considered it the turn of the North in turn of the Muslims, and just stayed back and did not contest. I was highly honored. And it's a gesture of friendliness and brotherhood and everything you can call it. Um, with due respect to those of my brothers from the North and Muslims who think they should contest now, I was of the opinion that the other side, the other aspect of Nigeria, should be reciprocated. Nothing more than that. Did you walk away from the PDP when it turned out that it wasn't going to go to the South? How do you mean it's not going to go to the South? The PDP. No, it's not because it's not going to go to the South. When did you join the Labour Party? I, I walked away from, well, I withdrew from the governorship race of Kaduna State in PDP because God has not created me as one that will buy delegates' votes. And I made it categorically clear that I was not in search of a job. I was there to correct a very bad situation. When it became apparent that uh, it was necessary to, be, to buy votes, I said, no, I, I just can't do this. It's not me. Respectfully, I withdrew from the race. And I told them that I was going to remain a party faithful and supporter. But then it became clear that they had become afraid of me and Jitri and that I had no future in that party. Because if I do not engage in buying delegates, if a government is installed by PDP and I play some key role in it, and then there won't be any corrupt ways. So there is no future for me in that. And I just won't change because Nigeria needs to change. And uh, eventually, you know, I said, look, um, Nigeria is one of endless creation of God Almighty. Let God do with it as he wills. I sort of pulled back, and then I received a call. A very, very senior, very senior Nigerian he says, Daddy, where are you? So I'm at your service. All right, come back. I came back, and we, we talked and talked. Five solid days of debates. When we decided then, I made PDP understand that, uh, look, when I came into the party, I told you I came in for a purpose, to fix Nigeria in 2018. Nobody who buys delegates' votes will do anything good for Nigeria. And I didn't do that. I didn't fit in PDP, and I walked away. Uh, Labour Party invited me. I think I like 
Peter Obi. I like the principles behind LP because LP was waiting to be discovered by Nigerians. It took all the things to happen to happen before we discovered Nigeria, uh, before we discovered LP. Now, anybody who earns legitimate income in Nigeria is by default an LP member. If you go to work nine to five or five to nine, if you engage in any form of legitimate business or trades, you are by default belonging to labor. We belong to Nigerians, Nigerians belong to us. Finally, after all this, we have come to where we think we should belong, Labour Party, and we're going to fix Nigeria. Do you feel like you've had the, you've, you've received the acceptance of the Labour Party or, so, or specifically the PTLB supporters? Because in recent times, he's gathered some uh, popular, um, some attention, the attention of the younger people especially those on social media and uh, in 24 hours when the news started circulating that you would be named the party's presidential vice presidential candidate it would almost seem as though you were accepted by the supporters of peter Obi. is that how you felt and do you feel that how does it feel specifically to be a vice presidential candidate of the labor party to be very honest with you right now i feel a bit numb. Um, am I happy? Am I excited? Uh, definitely, I'm not over the moon. You know, uh, the kind of thing like pinch yourself, uh, is this real? But let me quickly correct you. Peter Abi did not just gather some, I think he gathered phenomenal support because 8 million new registrations from, the, from young Nigerians within this short period of time is phenomenal. It clearly sh shows that a difference is going to be made. I think what's going to hit the powers that be, the misruling party, what's going to hit them is worse than what happened in 2015. LP is a train, uh, not like the Abuja Kaduna train. It will be very difficult to blow up this train because the whole of Nigeria is in it. There is no use throwing pebbles at an elephant walking. That is Peter Obi. The train is Labour Party and all that it carries. And what it carries is the interest of Nigerians. That's why Labour Party, we're blurring out, we're cleaning out those lines of demarcation in faith and uh, ethnicity. We want to link the farmer in Sokoto and Borno to the farmers in Ogun Oyo and Rivers and Akwaibo by common denominator, the Naira that they spend. We want to link the businessmen all over the country by the insecurity that they face. And uh, we really, really want to increase education. When, when I am talking about education, I'm a realist. There is a pyramid that we would like to implement, and this is strictly my um, thesis. We don't need anybody, we do not say everybody, 200 million Nigerians must go into universities and obtain university degrees, no. The pyramid that we will work to establish from basic literacy increase the number of Nigerians who can just communicate and have uh, numeral literacy. So from basic literacy to awareness, that is another strata, to another one of enlightenment, another strata, and then to another level where we call it education, ONDs, BSCs, HNDs, and just above that to another level what we call professionalism. Anything from PhD in any of the disciplines to where you have doctors, medical doctors that have specialized, engineers that have been certified, architects that have been certified, and those. We are interested particularly in the bottom, in the bottom two because when you have basic literacy and civic awareness, you have already created 
a middle class. When you have a stable middle class that you are now working as a government to see that everybody's salary take home will last them standard 30 days, you have a standard egalitarian society. You can move from any part of this country to any part of this country. If we achieve that, believe you me, this is enough for a lifetime. Senator Dathia, I find, I find that you're very interested in um, education and uh, it's a good thing. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, in this political era, it seems like an unprecedented chain of events going on. And it would seem that Nigerians are now very much alert and aware and would not be holding just the president to account for anything. So I ask you this as a vice presidential candidate, because you had talked about uh, Peter Obi and what he brings to the table. So I ask you, what do you bring to the table as vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party? I will give you a different answer from the one I gave earlier today. Uh, but just bear it in mind, uh, the system we have is presidential. The president and commander in chief is Alpha and Omega in the system. But in my own right, if you ask what I bring, I bring to you prudent procurement. The moment you eliminate inflated government contracts, which Peter Obi did in the eight years he was governor, the moment you eliminate that, you have money to spend on improving working conditions. The moment you are able to attract more and retain most of your earned revenue, you are good to go. This is what I'll bring. In addition to the pyramid I was speaking to you about, these two things, the pyramid of enlightenment above basic literacy, above basic awareness, over that education and professionalism, that pyramid and then procurement system. What you see today, what they call um, due process office, Bureau for Public Procurement, in 1999, I was behind it as a young man. I designed it. I wrote it, but as God will have it, never had the chance. When I was uh, among one, about 1,000 members that would have been to the National Assembly, and I invite you to go and confirm the records, only I sponsored the bill against inflated government contracts. This has destroyed Nigeria in the last 60 years. We've had all sorts of calls against corruption. And then when it comes to doing the real thing, they just turn away because they are going to benefit from it. Governor Peter and Obi and I are not interested in benefiting and all the people that we bring on board. We are telling you, have an issue. We are not interested. We will not bring our relatives and cousins and nephews and all that to run government. We will not do that. Let Nigeria's money go to work for Nigerians. Peter Obi said he's allergic to money being spent wrongly. That's a very, very smart comment to make. And it, it summarizes what uh, I end up writing books on, writing proposals on. Nigeria's money will not be wasted. Simple. All our money, what we save from a 10 billion naira project will pass, channel it through better working conditions and that is what labor does now while you while you talk about your politi your qualifications and the plans that the the obedati tickets have for has for nigerians i'd like to ask you this question beyond the governance aspect of things we've we've seen peter obi gain popularity among a certain number of nigerians and even you have said that it's about eight million now what would you bring in terms of political strength? I understand you come from a popular and large family. How would you contribute to the numbers to win this election? I will, I already am succeeding in convincing a large part of our side and making references to the holy books that a Christian is not a disbeliever. There are people of the scriptures. 
I can tell you that 90% of the people who are relating with the other side of Nigeria do not even understand the difference between a Christian and a disbeliever. Like the name of Jesus is mentioned so many times in the Holy Quran. Uh, Prophet Abraham, which is the same lineage that comes down uh, in it. I'm beginning to succeed and working with people then I'm also succeeding in saying that God makes no mistakes, will never make, can never happen. Putting us all together in Nigeria, in one country you have Muslims and Christians, in one state Muslims and Christians, in one local government, in one world you have, that is not a mistake. And I am succeeding in proving that, look, okay, look at the statistics. Think logically, what has happened to you in the last eight years? Have you become more secured? Just answer it yourself. No. Who was in charge? And they can't answer, they keep quiet. Now, what is your interest? Is your interest to be secured and prosperous? Yes. All right, please let us find somebody who will do that for you, irrespective of his name. That is what his politics is about. You know the concern for Then that. I am also succeeding in engendering generational change. I'm also succeeding in bringing people to think business in governance. I'm succeeding in people to see that, in fact, it is easier to make money. Since Nigerians love making money, we can show you and we can allow you how to make a lot more money as a private citizen. I am succeeding in showing that going the government way is not the way to become rich. Senator Dati, just one second. Let me ask yes. you this question. You know, the, the way politics is run in Nigeria yeah. is a little different. We're hoping for a change, yes. But there are concerns that should you win, should the Labour Party win the presidential Inshallah. election, how would you govern considering the fact that you would need the National Assembly and to an extent some governors to govern this country? Good. The Constitution is very clear. The moment President and Commander-in-Chief is sworn in, he remains in his own right and has very clear-cut um, relationship. Form your budget, send it to the National Assembly. If there's a law you want, if there's a law they want, they send it to you for assent. That is the basic. Now, we believe we're going to convert the better part of Nigeria, if not into the Labour Party, will convert them into the Labour way. Because if in the first three months, Nigerians feel they can travel all over Nigeria in relative safety, if in the first three months we don't see the Naira slide, if in the first three months no community is attacked by another, if in the first three months I, for example, succeed in, for example, every Sunday when I see in Kaduna and, and even here in Abuja, when Christians are in church, that you have to block the road because they don't feel safe, now you feel safe. You don't need any extra security. Nobody is going to attack you. That is the freedom and liberty. If we succeed in the first three months, people see the trajectory we have taken. None of Peter Abi's relatives are in the villa calling the shots. No system in the CBN is attributed to Peter Abi or any other person myself in which Nigeria is being ripped off. The whole Nigeria, and they see the flow of foreign capital. They see the return of Nigerian diaspora, to medical doctors coming back to open hospitals, open industries, start assembling computers, motorcycles, and even uh, vehicles in Nigeria. If they see that happen, Nigeria has changed, and it is no longer about political party. It is about success and the lack of. So you're not concerned that if you don't get the numbers in the National Assembly, that uh, the efforts of uh, your administration, if you win, could be frustrated. 
some could, legislations we, we, that you may require to work and then there's the issue of a possible impeachment you're not concerned about that we're, we're not concerned about that because you can't just impeach somebody who is succeeding why it doesn't make sense what is the point why should you in there he is bringing safety and security to nigeria foreign investment is flowing uh nigerians are at liberty to travel nigeria is now is now starting to belong to nigerians now it doesn't belong to us it belongs to the you know people in the bush when it belongs to you anybody who moves against you the people from the constituency will begin to recall them right now we are more overwhelmed not about the next elections not about how rosy and comfortable it will be in the villa or in the other side of the villa. We are more concerned about, first of all, stop killing, stop abducting, no community to be, and for God's sake, there's one message to be passed. And if you kill, Nigerian forces will kill you. No two ways to it. You will not escape. It's a basic law, of, it's, in the, it's the law of Nigeria. You can't kill and then escape into Senia. You know, one of the things that a lot of people have pointed to is uh, the number of young people that are behind Peter Obi, which I believe is now the Obi Dat movement. I believe that. But there are concerns, and I think this is also something that the bigger parties, the APC and the PDP, are banking on. The talk that social media will not vote. When you see this 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 set of young people alert. I know your woke. question. Let me just answer you. Do you to save you? time. Okay, go ahead. Go and start looking at the bookings of major European airlines into Nigeria. Not during Christmas time. Funny enough, this time after Christmas time, late January to third week of February, you will see that they are getting full. Unusually, I am into the business of data and statistics. And I decided to particularly look at that. This tells you that social media is going to vote. The social media, even if they're in Canada, look, even if they're in Antarctica, one person is there and he mobilizes 100,000 people here to go out and vote. It has succeeded. But we're not scared. The bank balance of any big politician is starting to be irrelevant. Those of us who sweated for what the little that we have, we're spending it very wisely and very carefully. And those of them who made it from government who just opened the coffers and bring it out, they will continue to splash it and it will continue to mean less and less till the election hour to continue to mean less and less. Plot the four political parties on a graph and going forward now, mark my words, the only way the misruling party will go is sliding downward. There was an attack in Kujie prison right inside FCT. Tell me if our leader went there, so-called leader went there, or anybody else. They are interested in politics, Which not the, the lives. Which of the I don't leaders? have to call names. National leader. The tell, tell, me if the president, the president, tell, me, tell me if the president went there. The You're forcing me to there. say it now. The president was there. I mean, like, the families of those who have been attack, uh, attacked, they need to be visited. The hospitals, where they are. We're not talking about ceremonies, for God's sake. When we say, be there, it means be there all the way. There are families now who, uh, of the security men, attacked and all that. How will they live? So don't, no, don't be there in ceremony, don't be there in picture, don't be there in news. Do you understand? This is not what we stand for. Be there effectually, all the way. All right. Ensure that all that is to be done to their families have been done. Anyway, before you, you interrupted me, I was talking about uh, the trajectory of the political parties. The only way the second party will go after its 16 years rule, I think it's stagnation. 
another party came out and it looks like after the first week it had finished its expansion. Only one party is on green fertile land, LP, because Nigerians are realizing by the hour that the profession that they belong to is by default labor. Senator Dati, um, I feel very sorry for anyone who will take over the reins in 2023. And I say that because a lot of work needs to be done. Let me ask you this question. Nigeria has a threat of recession. We've been in and out of recession. And the IMF is saying that I think in, in the next, in 2026 or thereabout, we would be paying, spending almost the entire budget paying debts because of our heavy borrowing. How do you intend to fix this? Increase in revenues. Immediately, um, a new government takes over, and by the grace of God, if it is us, we already are aware of a variety of ways in which Nigeria's revenues will multiply. Not just increase, it will multiply. Uh, if you listen carefully to what His Excellency Governor Peter Obi is saying, or, and these are things that are low-hanging fruits, they can happen more or less immediately. Uh, in my own case, I believe all the revenue generating agencies will have to sit up from day one. Everything has to go to federal government of Nigeria. Already you would have nearly doubled your revenue there. And uh, the oil losses will stop instantly, will export more oil and earn more. Then where he surprised everyone, he said that the fertile, uncultivated land in the north is Nigeria's crude oil. I could not agree more with him. The moment you have the land in the north being cultivated, I mean, all the way to uh, the tip of the southern Nigeria, you are already multiplying what is already multiplied. Now, what we know exactly where to target and immediately. Then the borrowing. We know that um, immediately the budget that is at hand, those leaks in the forms of contracts that have already been inflated, we will address them. When you look at the budget, there is so much waste and frivolity in it. We'll address it. These five things I've mentioned to you, immediately you will have enough. This is immediate measure and then the medium-term measure, which, again, I don't want to arrogate myself the knowledge of that. I will wait until His Excellency convenes the team of experts. But I assure you it will be far better than what the immediate measures I have told you now. Well, do, do, but, you, do you share the same stance as uh, Mr. Peter will be on uh, the issue of subsidy? It describes it as a scam. Is that where you stand as well? It has been a scam. And don't just add me and Peter Obi. President Buhari, during other governments that were not his, he said worse than, he called it worse than a scam. When he came, he did the same. He did worse. Now, let me tell you again. You uh, speaking in economics, right? You don't use the same stethoscope or the, the same medical equipment that you check the heartbeat of an elephant, you don't check it, you don't use it to check the heartbeat of a mouse. The recession they keep talking about, there is cyclical recession and there is linear recession. That's the one we belong. Ever since we were hit by economic uh, problems in the late 80s, we have been facing what we call linear uh, recession. When have we ever recovered? No. We've never recovered in, in the real sense. Our capita income has been falling consistently. Human development index has been falling consistently. So forget about reading fancy international um, indices like GDP, like HDI. No. We know that our living standards are supposed to improve. It is not improving. And if you keep saying recession, we have permanently been in recession. And we want to turn the tide. And the moment we turn it, 
like Naira is no longer going to slide. All the fundamentals behind the Naira strength include our belief in ourselves, our education, our strength, our unity are all built in the Naira. The moment we turn it around, Naira will not fall again. How do you intend That's, to turn it around? Of course, the way, it is, the way dollars are sold, in the, there are 11 different exchange rates. That should not be sustained. And the way dollar is sold, and then lack of confidence for people to bring money into Nigeria. The moment you pump that, there is something when you bring in your dollars, it will do for you. And then there are administrative bureaucracies, which you bring a dollar into Nigeria, they give you a terrible exchange rate. No, will give you a favorable exchange rate. The fear behind the Naira is that, it's not that it is low, it is continuing to be low. Once we stop that, and the world acknowledges that, oh, okay, now in Nigeria, the Naira is not going to fall. By force, we will hold it. And the only way it will go is up. So listen, once you do that, nobody will hedge against the Naira. It is now officially an uh, uh, appreciating currency, it, which a... means Naira can be held. The moment you hold Naira, you don't have to rush to dollarize it. You've already checked it. Your, your party, Senator Datsi, is yes. very, very interested in the economy. Absolutely. However, in turning this economy around, yeah. you need the people and you need the workers to do so. There is a huge challenge with security right now. It doesn't seem like your party is talking about the security challenge in the country. So what exactly is your party going to do about security, which in turn will have a direct impact on the economy which you intend please, to improve? Please bear with us. Um, security, especially in the context of Nigeria, where you have uh, terror, you have banditry, you have irredentity, you have um, secession and those, uh, you need to be extremely, not just careful, but cautious. We, we are starting to know so many things that are rather unspeakable now. And if His Excellency Governor, uh, His Excellency Peter Obi, has not said it, I would dare not say it now. But I want you to bear it in mind that there are unspeakable things that have happened. Um, I love Nigeria so much, sometimes I take risks. And I'll tell you, at least being a vice presidential aspirant in a contending leading political party, I'm not reckless to tell you, to say this, because I love Nigeria too much. Without Nigeria, we are nothing. Look. It so happened that I think in 2013, federal government of Nigeria invited a certain group into dialogue. That group nominated a highly placed Nigerian to represent them. No name called. Now, it took that individual about three days to repudiate. And then just over a year later, the same group attempted the life of that individual. Look at that very well. Here comes a group who promised the entire world that they will bring uh, security to Nigeria. There were a few bombings that were deadly in Abuja, but the moment they relocated to Abuja, the bombings stopped. Hey, what's going on? They used to travel Abuja, Kaduna, frequently every day. The moment they bought private jets and stopped flying and traveling Kaduna Abuja, it became the mo one of the most insecured routes. Senator Dati, our time is almost up. Just a second. Just a now second. you see, no, just a second. About our, time, our time is also almost yeah. up. But I find yeah. that the Labour Party is shying away from talking about no, no, no. how to, it will address security. No, no, no we're not The shying. other parties are speaking on how no, no, they will no. tackle listen, security. Listen, listen, listen. The reason why we're not saying too much is because we know too much. Whoever knows too little is talking too much now. I had to pray in my heart before telling you what I just told you, just for the love of Nigeria. If you know what we're starting to know now, you will not talk too much. You'll just wait until you get there, and then you'll deal with those who brought insecurity into Nigeria. Security is not the kind of thing you go about 
politicizing. We are not playing politics with security. For the sake of security, I'm ready to ally and partner with more than the Labour Party. But right now, I mean, why should I ever believe or even listen to um, APC talking about how they will secure Nigeria when after eight years and $90 billion borrowed and spent, Kuji prison is, uh, you know, uh, destroyed to remove. They don't know what they're talking about. Or they think Nigerians don't know what they're doing. Senator Datsi, I, yeah. I'd like to thank you for coming to speak with us yes. on politics today and uh, wish you well. And your party. Thank you very much.